Anybody have any questions about anything we've been talking about? Skip the quiz? No. <laughs> we've been skipping too many quizzes. Oh, that's too many. That's one too many. <laughs> um, any other questions? All right, so uh, what we're talking about now is circular motion. Yes? Just kind of everything, you know, lecture notes, just all the lecture notes, okay. trying to remember, you know, just remembering what I said. But not the whole circle motion. Uh, there's nothing about circular motion on it. Okay, so circular motion. Um, the idea of circular motion is... Um, that we need a very specific, spe that's not how you spell specific, you need a very specific um, A perpendicular so that the path is a circle. You didn't write that? No. But now you're going to. <laughs> so that fixes that problem. Um, and uh, this A perpendicular is called the centripetal acceleration. That means it's toward the center. And this acentripetal has a magnitude of the speed squared divided by the radius, and it always points toward the center of the circle. <coughs> and then we split. Um, we split circular motion up into two types. The first one is called uniform circular motion. And that's where the speed is constant. And the second type is non-uniform circular motion. Um, that's where the speed changes. Um, and the total acceleration is always equal to the centripetal acceleration plus the tangential acceleration. Um, and that tangential acceleration is zero if it's uniform. It's non-zero if it's non-uniform. You know, this is the one that changes the speed. And then I just gave you a set of, a general set of steps for doing these kind of problems. Uh, and they were, uh, first you have to choose a view where you can see the circular path, where the circular path looks like a circle in your view, and that's where your com coordinate system is going to be. Then choose the point that, on the path that you're going to do the calculation for. Then draw a vector from that point toward the center. This is all in your notes from last time. And that's the direction of your centripetal acceleration. 
Um, and we know that the magnitude of that vector is V squared over R. Then if it's non-uniform, we'll do some stuff about the tangential acceleration. We're not going to deal with that yet. And then once you're done with all that, um, we make a free body diagram, and then it's just a Newton's second law problem. All right, so I am going to do a uniform circular motion problem. And follow these steps. Okay, so let's say that there is an airplane. It's supposed to be like a fighter jet. I don't really know what those look like, though. I think I learned to draw in elementary school. That wing is all messed up, though. Okay, so this airplane uh, is following a big circular path. Uh, this isn't really drawn to scale. And the radius of this circular path is 250 meters. And the speed uh, where the, of the plane when it's taking this maneuver is 120 meters per second. Um, And uh, we want to calculate the acceleration of the pilot. Well, the acceleration of the whole plane, but he's part of it. Uh, and one reason you might be interested in this is um, to figure out whether he would live or not. I imagine pilots are appreciate, appreciative of you doing calculations like this before you assign them this thing. Um, and we're, we're going to do that calculation at this point here. Okay, so when the plane gets to this spot that's horizontally located from the center of the circle, we're going to calculate that acceleration. And then we're going to calculate... Um, the force vector that a 70 kilogram pilot applies to his chair at that instant. Yes, uh, 70 kilograms, it's um, pounds is that times, is the kilograms times 2.2. So that's 160 or so maybe. <laughs> okay, so we're going to go through the steps. So the first step is, uh, what's the view that we want to take? Um, we want to, like, do we want to do this calculation as if we're on the ground looking up, or do we want to, look at it from above looking down. We want to take a view where we can see that circular shape. So uh, the view we want is like from the side like this. So there's the circle and it has a radius of 250. And uh, we'll use a coordinate system like this. Uh, well, it depends. Um, I'm imagining the pilot doing a like backflip. You know what I mean? So uh, we're just going to be looking at it from the side.
And now the second step, uh, and as you do these problems at first, I would recommend just like look at the set of steps I listed out. It'll give you a set of steps that if you can follow it every time, get it sort of ingrained, and then you won't miss anything. Um, we want to look at the instant that the plane is there. Okay, so that ball is the plane. And it's following a path in this direction. Um, the next step is uh, we're going to draw the centripetal acceleration. So from the point that you're interested in towards the center, draw a vector like that. And the magnitude of that vector, well, this is the centripetal acceleration. And the centripetal acceleration magnitude is the speed squared divided by the radius of the circle. So in this case, that's 120 squared divided by 250. And you get a value of about 57.6 meters per second <laughs> squared. Uh, that was given, that the radius of that cir circular path is 250 meters. Okay, so now we know that the centripetal acceleration as a vector is 57.6 meters per second squared pointing this way. We know it's pointing that way because we drew this red vector from the point that we care about towards the center. That's the negative x direction. And so this vector is negative 57.6, in meters per second squared. The total acceleration is the centripetal plus the tangential. And in uniform circular motion problems, this is zero. So zero because it's uniform circular motion. And so the total acceleration here is negative 57.6, zero. Okay, so there's the total acceleration vector of the pilot or, you know, anything on the plane. It's all moving together. Anybody have any questions about that calculation? Zero because it's uniform circular motion. It says UCM. The next question is, now that we know that acceleration, would a pilot live? Um, well, that's... If you think of that in terms of number of g, g accelerations, 1 g is about 10 meters per second squared. So this is about 6 g, 6 g's. Um, yeah, he'll be fine. Uh, you can, I don't remember. I saw, um, I saw some special ones. And uh, I think for very small bursts, you can... <laughs> You can, so it has a lot to do with how long. Um, but yeah, you, over 10, if it's, if it's a fairly short dura duration. Um, I, if this was gonna go on for minutes, I don't know. I don't know what would happen. I'm sure he'd live, but you might pass out. And then if you pass out while you're flying a plane, that's also very bad for your health. Yes? Uh, 
Uh, not necessarily. Sometimes in this problem, um, it was it was specified in the problem where we wanted to calculate it, so that's where I put it. Um, sometimes it won't be, and then you get to choose. If you put it on the other side. Well, in this one, the problem specified where to put it, so you have to put it there. But in other problems, yeah, that's uh, a lot of the times you'll just have to choose a point. You definitely want to choose it at one of the four uh, points, either straight above the center or below, or to the right or to the left. I know what the right and left is, but your right is different than mine. It's a stage right thing. Okay, so then the second part. Now we know the acceleration vector of the plane or anything on the plane. We know the acceleration of the pilot. Uh, how are we going to figure out the force that the pilot applies to the seat. So to do that, we're going to do a free body diagram and use Newton's second law. So if at that point the plane is going straight up in the air, so the pilot is in a configuration like that. Um, the pilot's weight is this way. That's 70 times 9.81, so 686.7. And then uh, we don't know anything about the force that the seat, we don't know the direction of the force that the seat applies to the pilot, so I'm just going to write this in as an unknown force. I'll just call it F. We're going to calculate that whole force vector. So Newton's second law then says um, that 686.7 is in the negative y direction, so that's 0, negative 686.7. There's, there's a normal force and there's a friction force. Maybe there's um, the back of, he's probably leaning against the back of the chair. We're just going to say, it, it turns out in this case we can calculate both components of that force, so we're not going to make any predictions about the direction. So I'll call that Fx and Fy. That's all the forces, and those are equal to the mass, 70 kilograms, times the acceleration, negative 57.6. Zero. And so we get two equations. The x equation says fx is equal to 70 times 57.6. That's uh, 70 times negative 57.6. So fx is equal to negative 4,032. And the y equation says negative 686.7 plus Fy is equal to 0. So Fy is equal to positive 686.7. And so both of those, if you take them together, says F is equal to negative 4,032, positive 686.7. So now, now we have to think about it a little. So we calculated, what we calculated is the force on the pilot by the seat. So that's the force on the pilot by the seat. And we were asked for the force on the seat
by the pilot? Newton's third law, exactly. And so Newton's third law says, since we know that the force on the seat by the pilot is equal to the negative force on the pilot by the seat, this is equal to positive 4,032 negative 686.7 newtons. So the difference between this kind of problem and most of the other Newton second law problems that we've done is usually here we're going to be able to calculate the acceleration before we go into Newton's second law. And then we'll use Newton's second law to calculate forces. Um, what we've done usually so far is we've known stuff about the forces and we've used that to calculate the accelerations. But the, the basic process is the same. Draw the free body diagram, write Newton's second law, solve for the variables. Um, and this is, you know, this is a kind of engineering problem that you would actually, you know, that you would do in trying to analyze how strong things need to be. Um, say that's, a, that's an important maneuver that's done. You want to calculate what the forces are applied to the seat so you know how, how strong the reinforcements to the seat have to be. Can you, do you have to use the expensive seat or can you just use like wicker, you know? And so you look at this and then you're like, yeah, wicker. Yes. Well, because when what we isolated was the pilot, so the for, any forces we calculate here are forces on the pilot. Yeah, and and you know what the um, the real hint the the reason you know to isolate the pilot and not isolate the seat is just that we're not given the mass of the seat. If we were given the mass of the seat, that's probably what we would choose to isolate. But you know that mass is going to come in as a weight force, and you know it's going to come in multiplied by the acceleration. So if you don't know it, you're sort of stuck. Um, Let me do another one. So let's say there's a post and a ball on a string. And the ball on the string is moving in a circular path around the post. Um, let's say it's going six meters per second. And let's say we know the radius of this circle is 0.25 meters. Um, And let's say that's a constant speed. And we also know that the mass of this ball is 60 grams, which is 0 0.06 kilograms. I just chose that because that's the mass of the balls like this we have in the lab. Um, and we want to know what's the tension in the string. Um, so the first thing we have to do is choose a view. Uh, we want the one where we can see the circular shape. So I'm going to choose a top-down view of this picture.
there's the center and the ball is moving this way. Um, in this problem, you were just asking about this, Lily. Uh, nothing was specified about a point, so we can choose any point. You could choose any of the infinitely many points, but um, it would be silly not to choose one of those four that make the trigonometry easy. So let's choose this point right here. I didn't draw the coordinate system, but there's the coordinate system. Uh, now that we've chosen the point that we want to look at, the centripetal acceleration points this way towards the center. And so the centripetal acceleration is v squared over r, which is 6 squared over 0.25. And it's pointing this direction. So that is 36 times 4, 144 meters per second squared this way. Any questions about that? Uh, 60 grams, so 0.06 kilograms. Speed squared, yeah. Oh yeah, the, the speed is 6. And now that we have the centripetal acceleration, the total acceleration is the centripetal plus the tangential. Uh, and the tangential acceleration is zero because this is uniform circular motion. And so in components, 144 is in the positive x direction. So this is 144 x, 0 y, and the units are meters per second squared. Any questions about that? So now we have the acceleration. Now we can go to using Newton's second law, so the free body diagram, and go to the equation. Um, Okay, so free body diagram. Here's the ball. What forces are acting? So now we're getting into something that I said will come up occasionally in these kind of problems that haven't before. Um, well, there's always a weight. What direction is the weight acting? Straight into the page. Do you see that? Like we're looking at this from above. And so... How do you draw a vector that's pointed straight into the page? We've never had to do that before. We, what? So, yeah, um, there is a way you can do it. Uh, it turns out that vectors going straight into the page and vectors straight out of the page aren't going to affect the math. You know, they won't show up in the equations. So you can leave it off. If you want to, um, if you want to put it in there, here's how you represent it. Um, this, a circle with a X, is into the page. And a circle with a dot is out of the page. And what that's supposed to look like is, think of that vector as an arrow. Um, the dot is supposed to be the point coming towards you. And the X is supposed to be the feathers of the arrow going away from you. I didn't make that up. Um, and so we have a weight of I'm going to draw this bigger okay so there's the ball uh, we have the weight 
and that is 0 0.06 times 9.81, so that's 0 0.5886. And now we have to sort of 3D think about the boundary of this ball and think about where the outside world contacts it. Um, this is rolling along on a surface, and so there's a contact between the surface and the ball. What direction would that point? The normal force between the ground and the ball. That would point straight out of the page, and so you would represent that as a circle with a dot. We don't know the magnitude of that, so I'll just call it N. And then there's one more place where the outside world touches the ball. That's the tension, and so I'm going to include a little stump of cable in the direction that the, that the string would go, and the force comes straight out of that stump. Uh, the way I have it drawn is it's over here. If you'd chosen a different point, it would be going in a different direction. And we don't know what that magnitude is, so I'm going to call it T. And now we'll use this free body diagram to write Newton's second law. Um, okay, so now we'll see why these don't appear. In this, so our coordinate system is oriented like this. Using an x-axis that way and a y-axis that way, how do you get straight into the page? You can't. There's no way to do that, right? So, so there's no way to represent that vector in this coordinate system. So we're just going to leave it off. And the same thing with this one. How do you go? How far do you go this way and this way to get out of the page? It doesn't work. So when we're doing this, do we have to include those? Nope. You can leave those off. Yeah. Um. So the only force that appears is T. That's in the positive x direction. So we have a force vector T0. And that's equal to the mass of the ball, 0 0.06, times the acceleration of the ball, which we calculated, is 144.0. And so we have two equations. The first one says T is equal to 0.06 times 144. So T is 8.64 newtons. The Y equation says 0 equals 0. And so our answer is the tension in the cable is 8.64 newtons. And again, like this is, it's pretty easy to imagine an engineering application for a calculation like this if you're trying to, if this is something that you need to do for some reason uh, and you want to use the, the cheapest uh, type of string you can, save money, um, this tells you the, the force that you're going to have to, that that string cable is going to have to withstand. Uh, in a different spot? Yeah, like what if the ball or the, like, the top of the circle or yeah. that coordinate? Let's do it again. So let's do it again with the ball at a different point. Okay, so we're still going to take a top-down view so we can see the circle. But this time, let's say we want to analyze everything when the ball is at the top of the circle. Here's the coordinate system.
the centripetal acceleration goes from the point we choose towards the center. Um, and a centripetal is the speed squared divided by the radius in this direction. It has, it's in a new direction now. So that's 144 meters per second squared down. The total acceleration is the centripetal acceleration plus the tangential acceleration. I call it A-Tang because uh, a lot of times you use this in like aerospace calculations and astronauts like Tang. Um, since we're doing uniform circular motion, the speed is constant. Uh, there's no tangential acceleration. And so in components, uh, the total acceleration is 144 meters per second squared in the negative y direction, so that's 0, negative 144. <coughs> So now free body diagram. So there's the ball. Uh, there's a weight force going into the page. There's a normal force coming out of the page. Uh, so now we're looking at, let's see. So now the ball is up at the top. So the cable is coming out of the bottom of the ball the way I have it drawn. So there's the stump of the cable. The force is that way. So Newton's second law says these two don't show up. Um, what's this force vector T? Uh, in components. Zero negative t, yep, it's in the negative y direction. Zero negative t is equal to the mass times the acceleration that we just finished calculating. So the x equation says zero equals zero. The y equation says negative t is equal to negative 8.64. And so t is equal to 8.64 newtons. So we got the same answer. Nope. Uh, if you ever get a negative tension, something went wrong with the problem. Any other questions about that one? Okay. Um, this method that I gave I gave this method for every circular motion problem except tetherball problems. So what's a tetherball problem? 
Um, so when I say a tetherball problem, I'm talking about um, I'm talking about an object hanging from some kind of cable or rope, not touching anything except the cable. and swinging in a circular path that's parallel to the ground. Uh, let's see, so the mass, there are two things that define this. The mass is only touching the cable. And second, uh, the circular path is parallel to the ground. Um, you could have a mass that's only touching a cable uh, moving in a circular path that's not parallel to the ground. Um, like if, yeah, like, okay, so this is a tetherball problem. Okay, uh, this is not. Because in this case, it's the circular path of the object is parallel to the ground. In this case, it's not. Um, if you have these two conditions, tetherball problems, can only produce uniform circular motion. So um, if you ignore air resistance, which we pretty much always do, um, and you have an object that's only touching a string, and it's rotating in a circular path that's parallel to the ground, there's no way to make that speed, the speed of the object change. The speed has to be constant as it goes in this circular path. Try it. Well, you can't because there's going to be air resistance. Yes. Um, so if there was like um, there was like a platform here and um, a dog sitting on this platform Buzz McKenzie. And uh, the dog's tail is hanging through <laughs> a circle in the platform. And um, a man is hanging from the tail. <laughs>
and the man is swinging in a circular path. <laughs> then that is a tetherball problem. <laughs> it happens from time to time. <laughs> yes? Would, a, would like one of those swing knives that they have at the Yes. Okay. That's, you know what? I wish I would have thought of that. That is a more <laughs> practical example. Yes. <laughs> Okay, so um, here's what you do for tetherball problems. Um, so the key difference is at the start. In, uh, instead of choosing a view where you can see the circular path, you're going to take a side view. So first, take a side view of the problem. You know, looking at it from the side. So for example, um, If you have something like this, the view of the problem that you would take is that. Okay. So notice that in that view, um, you can't see the circular path. It doesn't look like a circle. All you would see if you're is you would see the ball moving along the line that way and then back along the line that way because the circle is like this. Okay. Um, second, uh, you know, choose the point to analyze. Draw a vector from the object toward the center of the circle. That's your centripetal acceleration. And then from that point, uh, <coughs> everything continues just like with the other method. Uh, yeah, so uh, if you, um, so yeah, I guess. Uh, The, acceler the total acceleration is just the centripetal acceleration because it's uniform circular motion. So I'll write it like this, where the tangential acceleration goes away because it's uniform. What? Oh. The one saying it goes to zero? Yeah, I don't know. I, uh, that doesn't matter. That doesn't mean anything. I'm just saying that there's no tangential acceleration. And then 
uh, free body diagram, Newton's second law. Okay, so let me uh, do one example. Um, so let's say the radius of the circle is 0.25 meters. This looks a lot like the last problem. And the mass of this ball is 60 grams again, so 0 0.06 kilograms. And let's say that the ball... Um, or, sorry, the cable makes an angle of 45 degrees with the horizontal. And we want to calculate two things. What's the tension in the string? And second, what's the speed of the ball? Okay, so we're going to take a side view of this problem. Um, I'm going to look at the point over here. The coordinate system is like this. Now draw a vector from the point that we're looking at towards the center of the circle. So that's this. <coughs> and that's the centripetal acceleration. And the centripetal acceleration is V squared over R. Um, we don't know what V is. We're trying to calculate that. But we can figure out what R is. Um, so, okay, we have, oh, we're, we already have R. Yes. A lot of times on these, you'll be given the length of the cable, and then you'll have to calculate R. Okay, you won this round. Um, and the direction is like this. So I'm just going to leave that as v squared over 0.25, pointing this way. Now the total acceleration vector is equal to the centripetal plus the tangential, which is 0. And that's equal to v squared over 0.25 in the positive x direction. So v squared over 0.25, which, by the way, is 4 <coughs> v squared. And then 0 in the y direction. Any 
And now we'll draw a free body diagram of the ball. Um, does the weight appear this time? Yeah, this time we're looking at it from the side. So the weight is just acting straight down towards the bottom of the page. Um, so we have a weight of 0.5886. And then a cable force. There's a little stump of the cable. The force acts out of the stump, and it has a magnitude of T. And we know that this angle is 45 degrees. So now we'll put that in Newton's second law. Um, so we have a weight force of 0, negative 0.5886. Um, we have a force vector of t times the cosine and sine of 45 degrees. So that comes out to be 0.7071t. Yeah, that's cosine and sine of 45. Those are the only forces, and so that's equal to the mass, 0 0.06, times the acceleration vector that we just calculated, v squared over 0 0.250. Zero. So uh, we have an X equation that says 0.7071T is equal to, if you, so 0 0.06 divided by 0 0.25 is, I think, 0 0.24. Uh, I think that should be what it is. 0 0.24. 4v squared. I just multiplied 0 0.06, uh, you know, divided 0 0.06 divided by 0 0.25, which is the same thing as multiplying it by 4. You get this. And the y equation says negative 0 0.5886 plus. 0.7071t is equal to zero. All right, so we have two variables, t and v, and two equations. We should be able to solve it. So I'll use the y equation. Uh, that says 0.7071t is equal to positive 0.5886. And so T is 0.832 newtons. And then plug that T into the X equation, and you get 0 0.7071 times 0.832 is equal to 0.24 v squared. Um, I don't have any of the intermediate steps here, but if you solve for v squared, if you solve for v, you get v is equal to plus or minus 1.57 meters per second. We need to choose either the plus or the minus, so how do we choose that? It's plus because this is a speed, so negative doesn't make any sense here. And so 1.57 meters per second squared. Like four miles per hour or something.
Any questions about that? <coughs> Um, so now um, let's do the same setup but now um, the angle between the cable and the horizontal is 10 degrees. What are the tension and the speed? Okay, so before this string was hanging down, so that angle was 45 degrees, it was hanging down like this. Um, what does your intuition say about what's going to happen first to the speed? What kind of speed are we going to need to make that angle? It's going to, yeah, to get that to be closer to horizontal, you need to make that speed faster. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to get a bigger speed. And if we increase the speed, what do you think is going to happen to that tension? <laughs> it's going to be higher. Yep, exactly. So uh, why don't you take a few minutes and see if you can work through this one. <coughs> 